uh, since the beginning of civilization, people have known that if you want to get others' attention and if you want to sort of manipulate them, activating this system is one way to do it. But what has never happened before is we've never had an interactive system that's constantly measuring people and optimizing itself to activate these these old uh, systems in the human being. Uh, so uh, what happens is when the whole society is kind of constantly being prodded by the algorithms to excite their uh, fight or flight responses, and it's not like anybody at Google or Facebook sat there and said they wanted to do this. Well, maybe at Facebook, but certainly not at Google. Um, it's just that the algorithm naturally optimized itself into finding this thing because it's there waiting to be found by any adaptive algorithm. So then and what happens is you get this diffuse version of it um, shifting the society's cognition. And uh, the diffuse version I like to call just irritability and paranoia. And so you get you get this wafting cloud of irritability and paranoia, which then colors everything and makes people um, less sane and less able to deal with reality than they used to be. Well, one of the things you say drives this uh, and I, I think this is also both correct and profound, is the business models of these companies where you you have companies that are essentially profiting off of uh, clicks and engagement uh, for advertising revenue. And so it's not just that they're tapping into these parts of our brains that have been hardwired, um, but then they get rewarded for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was around when that happened. And it's it's really a drag. It's sort of um, a tragedy how it all unfolded. Uh, way back in the beginning, uh, there, there were a few ideas that a lot of people believed in very intensely. Everybody wanted to have perfect socialism online where there wouldn't be money and everything would be free. Everybody wanted to worship tech entrepreneurs, like uh, Steve Jobs as an example. And, and just to resolve those two things was really hard. And the only solution anyone ever found was the advertising model. And if it was just old-fashioned advertising, like on TV, it would just it would be no worse than that was and overall i i think that's done more good than harm although some people disagree with me but it it wasn't old fashioned advertising it turned into this constant measurement and feedback system this behavior modification system and that's where we ran into trouble yeah, I think you coined an acronym around this, uh, the the bummer acronym, which I thought was yeah. both clever and apt. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, let's see if I can remember it. Behavior of users modified and made into an empire for rent. Yeah, I, I thought that was indeed a bummer. <laughs> that really summed it up, um, uh, particularly because the empire that's being rented or built is being built on our data, like our habits, our preferences, what we like, what we react to, what we clicked on. Uh, and you're passionate about the fact that our data should be ours as one of the big reforms. Yeah. So this is something I've been thinking about for many years. And I I'm more convinced than ever. I don't think it's I don't think it's the only solution we need. I don't think it's like some kind of magic key to fixing the future, but I, I do think it's one part of the mix that we definitely need. If you think back on the history of how people have contributed to civilization, one of the really interesting high points for me was the introduction of the idea of, of uh, quality uh, by Deming. Uh, or Six Sigma, sometimes it's called, where what you do is you have people who are working on something become aware of how what they're doing is contributing to the quality for the society so that they can take pride on it instead of being treated like robots. And this is famously uh, how Japan moved from being a bad manufacturing company to the best manufacturing company by making people working on an auto line, for instance, aware of how what they did affected the outcome of the automobile and listening to them, treating them as human beings. But in Silicon Valley, we haven't learned that lesson. What we say is when we get data from people, we're going to treat it as exhaust. That's always the word. Oh, it's just their exhaust, as if people couldn't contribute. And then we get all this data in uh, that people didn't know they were contributing, and then we're supposed to make it useful in algorithms. Wouldn't it make more sense? Wouldn't it be better? Wouldn't it just be smarter for people to understand how their data could be used to 
be motivated to earn some money, to make it better, to become creative participants, to become to take on some of the power, the decision making power of what the ultimate algorithm should do. I mean, wouldn't it just make everything better for this to be more distributed? 